What's up you guys, it's Adrienne Finch. Welcome back to my channel. I have missed making tech videos and customization videos, so I am back with a MacBook customization video. This is for the new Mac OS Big Sur update. I caved and I finally got it. Well, actually I didn't really have a choice. My computer legitimately crashed. So when I rebooted it and totally redid it, I needed to get the update and I am so happy I did. I actually love the update. I think it is so, so, so cute and aesthetically pleasing. I love the way that some of the visuals have changed. And most importantly, I love that it finally resembles kind of the iPhone layout and the way that the icons are and where the settings are more than ever before. I always felt like the laptop was kind of the one device that stood on its own, didn't quite like look like the other ones, even though they all sync together. And now I just feel like finally all three of my devices can really sync easily and seamlessly and they look the same and I just love it. Speaking of technology and how happy I am to be back, before we get into the customization tricks and tips, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Hoover. You guys know I'm obsessed with new and innovative technology. I always have been. And if you've been watching my vlog at all recently, which by the way, I kind of post on more frequently than this channel, go subscribe. But if you've been watching, you would know that I'm constantly redoing my room, updating my house, cleaning my house, figuring out all these different ways to do that. And the one thing that always seemed to be missing from kind of my array of devices was a carpet cleaner. I feel like my carpets have gotten dirtier and dirtier over time, even in ways that we don't really notice. And after hiring a professional carpet cleaner one time, I was like, oh my God, this is life changing. I'm determined to find a way to do this myself. And I did. So Hoover actually sent me their Smart Wash Plus Automatic Carpet Cleaner, which is their best full size upright carpet cleaner. It is so simple. You literally just push it forwards to clean the carpet and then you pull it backwards to dry. So it works just like a vacuum cleaner. I am so beyond impressed with its ability to clean my carpet. I'm also really grossed out by how much dirt there actually is on my carpet. Um, so as I keep drilling new things into my wall and just causing so much dust and debris, it has been so nice to be able to clean my carpet. I've been cleaning my area rugs. I've been cleaning my wall to wall carpet in my room. I genuinely wondered how good this would be on stains and look, it just literally sucked up that stain. It is practically gone. And I feel like if I go over it one more time, it'll be completely gone. So that that is awesome. So if you guys are looking for an innovative, really simple solution to cleaning your carpets, I highly recommend this Hoover product. I will link it down below, especially if you guys have pets. There are many different types of solutions you can use. So there's one specifically for pets. So I seriously could not recommend this product more. Click the link in my description to check it out. Without further ado, you guys, let's get right on into the MacBook customization tricks. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to customize your MacBook with this new update. I'm gonna show you a couple different things, so feel free at any time to skip around. I have the timestamps in the description box, but we're just gonna get started. So first we're gonna talk about wallpapers. Now I wanna show you guys a couple different ways that you can both create your own custom aesthetic wallpapers. And I'm also gonna show you guys some places that you can find some that already exist for free that you can just simply download and use as wallpaper. So the first thing you can do is actually look at the wallpapers that the MacBook provides you with this new update there are several different dynamic wallpapers you can use so you're simply gonna go to your settings and then go to desktop and screensaver. And once you're there, you find all of these different um, examples of dynamic desktop. Well, what this means is that throughout different times of the day, it shows kind of a different version of that image. So it's the same image, but different lighting to make you kind of feel like it's going along with your days. As you can see by kind of this little thumbnail, those are the different stages that it would go throughout. They've also added these new kind of cartoon looking ones that are pretty neat. They remind me of like a comic book kind of. So there's plenty more options of those, but then they also have pretty desert pictures that I think are really cool. And again, they have both light versions and then dark and it changes based on the time of day. So yeah, that's one way to do that. Now, another way that you can find existing wallpapers that are free that you can just use for your own computer is to go over to Pinterest. So on Pinterest, I'll just search aesthetic MacBook wallpaper. And then here you'll see a lot that people have made that are super, super cute. Now you have to be careful on Pinterest of saving images that aren't the right resolution. A lot of the images that I'll save from here um, don't end up being high enough quality. So sometimes I really just go to Google and search the same thing, but you can always go ahead and try to save the image and then just open your settings again to desktop and wallpaper and just drag it right over to the picture. As you can see, this one is pixelated, but here's another one that I saved from Google 
that actually is the right resolution. Here is actually my wallpaper that I like to use as of late. It is from the Flourish Planner. If you guys don't know her on Instagram, she rocks. She has a bunch of awesome wallpapers, so I've been loving using hers lately. And if you guys didn't know, I actually have a membership community now on Patreon for my podcast, Self Made Mastery. And with a membership, which is as little as $5 a month, I send out freebies every single month, digital downloads, productivity things, planners, wallpapers, all of those things. So you can check out the link down below if you want to subscribe to that because I give away a lot of things like this. But the next thing I wanna show you guys is how to actually create your own. So one of the easiest ways to do this is to use Canva. If you guys are familiar, canva.com is basically a website full of templates for you know social media posts and wallpapers and anything of the sort. Let's search MacBook wallpaper. And you'll see a bunch of free templates that you can begin with. I am going to click on this one. For this one, basically you are able to change the colors, the background, pretty much anything you want. So this could have that. This could also have a textured background like that or like that. I'm gonna choose this kind of creamy color. You can switch out the picture. You can upload your own pictures. You can pretty much do anything that you want. So I am just going to put my own picture in there with a little filter over it that they had. So then same as before, you would just download this as a PNG to your desktop. One really important step when you do save images that you wanna use as icons or wallpaper is to right click on it and actually click on share and then add to photos. This will add it to your photos on your computer so that the image is always there. Sometimes when it goes up to the cloud and you have to re-download it, it'll show up as missing and we don't wanna deal with that. So we're just going to, again, drag this right in and there you have it. Another way that you can make your own background, especially actually customize it even more, is on Procreate on iPad. So if any of you guys have an iPad Pro or just an iPad in general, and you have the program Procreate, you can make your own wallpaper very easily. So as you can see, I have kind of all of these different templates for sizes saved. So I just choose the MacBook wallpaper one, and then you can pretty much play around and add any sort of background and any sort of texture. You can also add photos and such to the actual background here itself, but sometimes Sometimes I like to just make sort of a textured background and then upload it onto Canva and use Canva or Photoshop to actually create the background myself. If you guys want a deeper tutorial or a deeper dive into Procreate and how you can make cute backgrounds there, let me know in the comments down below because I would love to do it. Next, I'm gonna show you guys how to customize your Chrome. I could not figure this out for the longest time on the old software. And then the second I updated it, for some reason it seemed super self-explanatory. So as you can see, I made my Chrome be kind of this same sort of aesthetic as the rest of my computer. I really like this color. So so all you're gonna do is when you first open Chrome, you should have this customize button in the lower right hand corner. If you don't see it, you can go up here to the three dots, click on settings, and then you'll be able to open the appearance tab right here, and then click on this under themes. But back to this, if you just click customize here, you'll be able to not only upload something from your own device, a photo or something like that, we can actually try that right now. So there we go, that was that same image I used for the background. But if you don't want an actual picture from your device, you can just click on no background. And then when you go to color and theme, that's where they give all of these awesome options for colors and themes. So I actually really love the options that they have to offer. They have pink, they have pretty much every color. So again, this is the one I've been liking to stick with, but I just thought that was a really cool way to customize your Chrome. Now, while we're on the topic of Chrome, I actually have a really awesome customizable feature that I just figured out as well. You can actually set Chrome to open certain pages on startup. So when you first click on Chrome, it'll already open the pages you want. So maybe you want your YouTube channel to pop up first. You can set it to do that. When I click on it, I actually have four of my pages that I use the most for content tracking and content calendars pop up. It's this website called Airtable. I've talked about it many times before. So I actually have my different Airtables for my different content pop up right when I open Chrome. So that's what's super nice. At the beginning of my work day, I can be like, cool, what's coming up? What videos do we have? Oh. Here's my custom aesthetic MacBook computer video, cool. In order to do that, you're gonna go over to the three dots, click on settings, then you're gonna just scroll all the way down to on startup. 
So you can either have it open to a new tab page, continue where you left off, so wherever you quit Chrome, you can have it come back up, or open a specific page or set of pages. So I just did that. You just type the URL of the page that you want to open, and there you have it. Next, I'm gonna show you guys how to make custom widgets. So you guys probably saw my iOS 14 video on the update here. Um, widgets became a very popular thing, and I actually did not realize that you could customize your widgets on your MacBook as well. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. In order to access your widgets on your MacBook, you just click the date and time at the top. Now, as you can see right now, I have my notifications also showing. I have my text, I have my calendar, and then I just have one widget because I haven't set this up yet. I wanna do it with you. So right off the bat, I just wanna show you guys how to get rid of those other notifications. If you don't want them to live in your sidebar, here is what you do. You're gonna open up your system preferences, click on notifications, and then you're basically gonna make sure that for everything, the tab that says show in notification center is unchecked. So I'm just gonna make sure that those are unchecked and then there you go, they're not there. So we're gonna talk about customizing our widgets right now. So click on edit widgets and basically right here, you'll see a list of a lot of the widgets that you can use that come with your computer. You can have notes, you can have podcasts, anything like that. But for me, I really want to customize them and have them be as little more aesthetically pleasing. So what you're actually going to do is go to the app store, search for Widget Smith. This is one of the ones we use for our phone. You're actually going to download this one that says dash dot dash. And then I also downloaded this color widgets one. So in order to add the custom widgets, you're going to actually navigate to those apps. So first we'll do color widgets. Once Color Widgets is open, you will see that there are many that you can choose from to customize. So I'm gonna click on this one because I kind of like the overall layout and I wanna customize it myself. Here are all the options there, but I'm gonna just go with the first one, your images. Now here's where you could pick and save any image that you want. So I'm gonna click on my images and then just select this one, there we go, click done. So then I'm just gonna click on set widget and then I'm going to also navigate to the dot dot dash. Why is it called that? I don't know. You're gonna click add a widget, okay? So then you're gonna go back to your widgets, click edit widgets and click on color widgets here. There we go. And then click on dot dot dash. We're gonna make this be a medium size, mm, actually a large one too. We're actually gonna get rid of the normal calendar. I'm gonna move my dock to the bottom. That way I can actually see my widgets, but there you have it, super cute. So you can do so many different things with this. This obviously isn't the final way that I'll leave mine, but I just wanted to show you how you can achieve that. Now, last but not least, I wanna show you guys how you can customize the actual icons on your desktop. So as much as you know these folders are cool and all, they're blue and they don't really fit the look I'm trying to go for. So all you need to do is search for images that you want to use or create your own using some of the strategies that I showed earlier. So I'm gonna search for a little PNG that I could use. You have to make sure that it's actually a PNG though. And this one is, so I'm gonna go ahead and save this to my desktop. So in order to change the icon, first you're gonna want to open the actual image that you saved to be your icon. Once it is open in preview, you wanna click on edit copy. Then you want to right click on the folder that you wanna change the icon for. And you're going to click on get info. After you do that, highlight the little icon in the upper left and then click on command V to paste it. And that is all. Oh, there you have a custom icon. How cute is that? So that's it for today's MacBook customization video. There's obviously so much more we can dive into, but I'll save it for future videos. So let me know down below what else you guys want to see. And I'll be back at you with a new video very shortly. Love you guys so much. Bye.